Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be our next trade deadline recap show as I go into the Calgary Flames and the moves that they made at the deadline to try to help their team to be more of even a cup contender with Markstrom, Goudreau, um, Lindholm, and the boys there in Montreal. Um, they obviously need to add a little bit more, but not much more, or not in Montreal, in Calgary, excuse me, they have to add a little bit more, but not much more because they already added the big kahuna in Tyler Toffoli in February, and that was a A++ move for them, bringing in Toffoli, who's already fit in like a glove. And then they added on March 18th, or 16th, excuse me, another very good, one of the most underrated forwards that has one of the best contracts in hockey, Cali Yarncroak, for um, 2022 second, 2023 third, and a 2024 seventh to the Kraken. That was a beautiful move because Yon Croak is obviously a player, in my opinion, obviously from the experience he got in Nashville, a player that's better for a team positioned to make a run rather than being on a rebuilding team where he probably helped the young guys there during his time there. Now he gets a chance to be on a cup run with the Calgary Flames, so good for him. And giving up a fifth round pick for a great faceoff guy, a guy that's a good fourth line center in Ryan Carpenter was very smart by the Calgary Flames as well. That fills out your depth. You have a guy that can just consistently keep winning the draws for you in the bottom six and can consistently play a pretty solid two-way game in that bottom six level. He's not going to bring you much offense, but uh, can bring you a solid two-way game in the bottom six level and continuously win draws. He was one of the -the under-the-radar commodities on the trade list, and that's a great grab for the Calgary Flames. And then they also then moved Michael McNevin, who they recently acquired, to Ottawa, which I think is better for him because he obviously fell out of favor with the Canadians organization in terms of him not liking the position they put him in. And then in Calgary, you guys have solid goaltending, obviously, so he obviously is going to get a better chance, in my opinion, in Ottawa. So that's a good trade for both clubs, and then whatever you get in future considerations, we'll see down the line. But Ryan Carpenter, great move to fill out the bottom half of that lineup. Great face-off guy. Pretty solid two-way player. Cal Yonkro, great two-way player. Also can slide in to take face-offs when needed. I'm not going to say he's, a, he's not a great face-off guy, but he has when needed slid in during his time at Nashville. I didn't really watch Seattle oh too much this year because they're not one of the most interesting teams. I watched them at the beginning of the season and then fizzled off watching them, but um, Yonkro's a guy that can slide in there with needed. Plays very good defensively, and also, obviously, has a very good shot. It's just, he's always on teams. He doesn't necessarily have to use it that much, which, again, he's <laughs> with with Calgary, who have multitudes of other people that are going to score before him. But he fits in perfectly to this team, I think, and to Sutter's system. So does Ryan Carpenter. So great moves made. But their biggest move made was, of course, the one that they made way before anybody expected, which was Tyler Toffoli, with one of the other biggest moves they made was in the off season to have one of the better backups in hockey in Daniel Vladar. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please need to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 215 or more by the end of March. I really appreciate your guys' love and support this far. Peace out, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the season, Flames fans. You guys seem pretty poised for a great run.